at what point do you need to stop eating more protein, for example? So is one piece of ribeye steak enough? Or if you're still hungry, should you go for another? Uh, knowing that that's probably excess, so to speak. Well, not necessarily excess in protein terms, but, it, but, but it's, some of it at least is going to turn into uh, glucose. Um, any comments on that? Yeah, and again, this is kind of an, an, another very nuanced topic. So I think the blood sugar rise you might see after a protein meal, I think gluconeogenesis is always occurring. And you're never going to stop it from occurring. When you sleep, it's occurring. So uh, we, we it's it's part of our natural physiology. It's always there. It's there for a reason. Uh, in fact, some people will make the claim that, you know, gluconeogenesis provides the, the, the amount of glucose that's needed, uh, or at least for, for a normal person, you know. Uh, there is, uh, you know, whenever you say what's too much, well, too much automatically means it's bad. So you don't, it, it more is like, well, how do we, how do we define what's too much? Um, I think that, again, what I was pointing to that when we eat some protein, I think what happens is you get a stimulation of glucagon. And as you probably know, glucagon causes the liver to release glucose, you know, with glycogenolysis. So it's a kind of regulatory hormone, just like uh, norepinephrine and cortisol do. So you stimulate this glucagon response via protein, and I think that's probably what's driving the early rise in, in blood glucose, not necessarily gluconeogenesis. Nice. Uh, that, I think that tends to be more of a slower process because you first have to fully break down the protein. That you know, usually protein usually meat is sitting in your stomach for three or four hours before it's released, and then it gets in the small intestine and it has to be broke down into its composite amino acids and you know the peptides and the amino acids, and then. The carbon skeleton has to be stripped off and then the nitrogen forms and then some of those carbon skeletons go to ketones, some of them go to glucose production. Uh, so, but but much, of, much of the protein goes directly into structural uh, requirements. And so we get more efficient at gluconeogenesis as we limit carbohydrates over time. We know that's true. Uh, so we more effectively restore our glycogen reserves. So most people will line up appetite. You know, you think about how human or animal physiology is designed. Most animals in the wild don't have diabetes, they don't have uh, obesity issues, they tend not to have chronic disease for the most part. I mean, they will die of trauma or injury or infection, things like that, or malnutrition or starvation, but generally they're eating their native diet. So I think, I think a native natural diet for human beings is very much meat-based based on our evolutionary history. And so I think that there's a balance between satiety, the amount of satiety meat produces and what's going on physiologically so it's well it's not impossible to overeat anything really i mean meat included it becomes more difficult and so i'd say well how do you know if you're overeating meat well if you're starting to put on accumulate excess body fat for sure if you're seeing really sort of you know high blood glucose as you know as a type 1 diabetic again that's a special situation there you might you might see that that you know maybe you're eating it could be that you're having this overly uh, robust glucagon response and so you might have to maybe you can still eat the same amount of meat but you might have to break it into smaller dosages so there's different you know different ways to do that i don't think anybody truly truly knows but i think things that i would be concerned about is am i gaining excess body fat am i um am i uh seeing you know abnormally high blood glucose spikes and then the other thing would be you know i mean given if you're eating the same amount of food every day are you requiring more and more and more insulin? Because then you would be becoming more insulin resistant, right? That's the definition of that. So if you're, you know, if you're eating, uh, you know, a certain amount of meat and your blood glucose sort of stays the same and your insulin requirements are pretty much staying the same, you're, you're probably fine most likely in that situation.